an international auxiliary language, sometimes abbreviated as IAL, or Auxlang, or interlanguage is a language meant for communication between people from different nations who do not share a common native language. An auxiliary language is primarily a second language. Languages of dominant societies over the centuries have served as auxiliary languages, sometimes approaching the international level. Latin, Greek or the Mediterranean lingua franca were used in the past. Arabic, English, French, Mandarin, Russian, and Spanish have been used as such in recent times in many parts of the world. However, as these languages are associated with the very dominant cultural, political, and economic that made them popular, they are often also met with resistance. For this reason, some have turned to the idea of promoting an artificial or constructed language as a possible solution. The term auxiliary implies that it is intended to be an additional language for the people of the world rather than to replace their native languages. Often, the term is used to refer to planned or constructed languages proposed specifically to ease international communication, such as Esperanto, Edo, and Interlingua. However, it can also refer to the concept of such a language being determined by international consensus, including even a standardized natural language, e.g., international English, and has also been connected to the project of constructing a universal language. History the use of an intermediary auxiliary language, also called a working language bridge language vehicular language, or unifying language, to make communication possible between people not sharing a mother tongue. In particular when it is a third language, distinct from both mother tongues, may be almost as old as language itself. Certainly they have existed since antiquity. Latin and Greek, or Koine Greek, were the intermediary language of all areas of the Mediterranean, Akkadian, and then Aramaic, remain the common languages of a large part of Western Asia, through several earlier empires. Such natural languages used for communication between people not sharing the same mother tongue were called lingua francis. Lingua francis have arisen around the globe throughout human history sometimes for commercial reasons, so-called trade languages, but also for diplomatic and administrative convenience, and as a means of exchanging information between scientists and other scholars of different nationalities. The term originates with one such language, Mediterranean lingua franca, a pidgin language used as a trade language in the Mediterranean area from the 11th to the 19th century. Examples of lingua francis remain numerous and exist on every continent. The most obvious example, as of the early 21st century, is English. There are many other lingua francis centralized on particular regions, such as Arabic, Chinese, French, Portuguese, Russian, and Spanish. Constructing languages. Since all natural languages display a number of irregularities in grammar which makes them more difficult to learn, and they are also associated with the national and cultural dominance of the nation that speaks it as its mother tongue, attention began to focus on the idea of creating an artificial or constructed language as a possible solution. The concept of simplifying an existing language to make it an auxiliary language was already in the encyclopedia of the 18th century, where Joachim Fage de Villanueva, in the article on Lang, wrote a short proposition of a laconic or regularized grammar of French. Some of the philosophical languages of the 17th-18th centuries could be regarded as proto-ox langs, as they were intended by their creators to serve as bridges among people of different languages as well as to disambiguate and clarify thought. However, most or all of these languages were, as far as can be told from the surviving publications about them, to incomplete and unfinished to serve as ox langs or for any other practical purpose. The first fully developed constructed languages we know of, as well as the first constructed languages devised primarily as ox langs, originated in the 19th century, saw wrestled by Francois Sudra, a language based on musical notes, was the first to gain widespread attention, although not, apparently, fluent speakers. Volapük
During the 19th century, a bewildering variety of such constructed international auxiliary languages, IALs, were proposed, so Louis Couturat and Leopold Lo and Histoire de la Langue Universelle, 1903, reviewed 38 projects. Volapük, first described in an article in 1879 by Johann Martin Schleier, and in book form the following year, was the first to garner a widespread international speaker community. Three major Volapük conventions were held in 1884, 1887, and 1889, the last of them used Volapük as its working language. André Trapillet writes of the third Volapük convention. In August 1889 the third convention was held in Paris. About 200 people from many countries attended. And, unlike in the first two conventions, people spoke only Volapük. For the first time in the history of mankind, 16 years before the Boulogne Convention, an international convention spoke an international language. However, not long after this the Volapük speaker community broke up due to various factors, including controversies between Schleier and other prominent Volapük speakers, and the appearance of newer, easier-to-learn planned languages, primarily Esperanto. From Kademvev Unik Volapüka to Academia Pro Interlingua Answering the needs of the first successful artificial language community, the Volapukas established the regulatory body of their language, under the name International Academy of Volapuk, Kadembev Untuk Volapuka, at the Second Volapuk Congress in Munich in August 1887. The Academy was set up to conserve and perfect the auxiliary language Volapuk, but soon conflicts arose between conservative Volapukists and those who wanted to reform Volapuk making it a more naturalistic language based on the grammar and vocabulary of major world languages. In 1890 Schleier himself left the original Academy and created a new Volapuk Academy with the same name, from people completely loyal to him, which continues to this day. Under Waldemar Rosenberger, who became the director in 1892, the original academy began to make considerable changes in the grammar and vocabulary of Volapük. The vocabulary and the grammatical forms unfamiliar to Western Europeans were completely discarded, so that the changes effectively resulted in the creation of a new language, which was named Idiom Neutral. The name of the Academy was changed to Academy Internazional de Lingua Universal in 1898, and the circulars of the Academy were written in the new language from that year. In 1903, the mathematician Giuseppe Piano published his completely new approach to language construction. Inspired by the idea of philosopher Leibniz, instead of inventing schematic structures and a priori language, he chose to simplify an existing and once widely used international language, Latin. The simplified Latin, devoid of inflections and declensions, was named interlingua by Piano, but it is usually referred to as Latino sine flexione. Impressed by Piano's interlingua, the Academy Internazionale de Lingua Universal effectively chose to abandon a diem neutral in favor of Piano's interlingua in 1908, and it elected Piano as its director. The name of the group then was changed to Academia Pro Interlingua, where interlingua stands for Piano's language. The Academia Pro Interlingua survived until about 1939. It was partly Piano's interlingua that inspired the better-known interlingua of the IALA presented in 1951 by the International Auxiliary Language Association, IALA. Esperanto After the emergence of Volapük, a wide variety of other auxiliary languages were devised and proposed in the 1880s-1900s, but none except Esperanto gathered a significant speaker community. Esperanto was developed from about 1878-1887 and published in that year by L. L. Samenhoff. As a primarily schematic language with word stems randomly borrowed from Romance, West Germanic and Slavic languages. The key to the relative success of Esperanto was probably the highly productive and elastic system of derivational word formation which allowed speakers to derive hundreds of other words by learning one word root. Also, from early on, Esperantists created their own culture, 
philosophy, and spirituality, which made them a movement devoted to the sacred cause Sif and Venkas Mall. Within a few years this language had thousands of fluent speakers, primarily in Eastern Europe. In 1905 its first world convention was held in boulogne sur mer Since then world congresses have been held in different countries every year, except during the two world wars. Esperanto has become the most outlandishly successful invented language ever, and the most widely spoken constructed international auxiliary language. Esperanto suffered a setback. After the 1922 proposal by Iran and several other countries in the League of Nations to have Esperanto taught in member nation schools failed, and Esperanto speakers were subjects of persecution under Hitler and Stalin's regimes, but in spite of these factors more people continued to learn Esperanto, and significant literary work, both poetry and novels, began to appear in Esperanto in the period between the world wars. From among the various constructed language projects, it is Esperanto that came closest to the possibility of truly becoming an officially recognized international auxiliary language. Edo and the Esperantidos The delegation for the adoption of an international auxiliary language was founded in 1900 by Louis Couturat and others. It tried to get the International Association of Academies to take up the question of an international auxiliary language, study the existing ones, and pick one, or design a new one. However, the Meta Academy declining to do so, the delegation decided to do the job itself. Among Esperanto speakers there was a general impression that the delegation would of course choose Esperanto as it was the only Oxlang with a sizable speaker community. At the time, it was felt as a betrayal by many Esperanto speakers when in 1907 the delegation came up with its own reform version of Esperanto, Edo. Edo drew a significant number of speakers away from Esperanto in the short term. But in the longer term most of these either returned to Esperanto or moved on to other new Oxlangs. Besides Edo, a great number of simplified Esperantos, called Esperantidos, emerged as concurrent language projects. Still, Edo remains today one of the three most widely spoken Oxlangs. Occidental, Interlingu, and Novial. Edgar von Wall's Occidental, also called Interlingu of 1922 was in reaction against the perceived artificiality of some earlier Oxlangs, particularly Esperanto. Inspired by idiom neutral and pianos interlingua, von Wall created a language whose words, including compound words, would have a high degree of recognizability for those who already know a Romance language. However, this design criterion was in conflict with ease of coining new compound or derived words on the fly while speaking. Occidental gained a small speaker community in the 1920s and 1930s and supported several publications but had almost entirely died out by the 1980s. More recently Occidental has been revived on the Internet. In 1928 Edo's major intellectual supporter, the Danish linguist Otto Jesperson abandoned Edo and published his own planned language, Novial. It was mostly inspired by idiom neutral and occidental, yet it attempted a derivational formalism and schematism sought by Esperanto and Edo. The notability of its creator helped the growth of this auxiliary language, but soon both Novial and Occidental were abandoned in favor of Interlingua, the first auxiliary language based fully on scientific methodology. Interlingua The International Auxiliary Language Association, IALA, was founded in 1924 by Alice Vanderbilt Morris, like the earlier delegation for the adoption of an international auxiliary language. Its mission was to study language problems and the existing Oxlangs and proposals for Oxlangs and to negotiate some consensus between the supporters of various Oxlangs. However, like the delegation, it finally decided to create its own Oxlang. Interlingua, published in 1951, was primarily the work of Alexander Goad, though he built on preliminary work by earlier IALA linguists including André Martinet, and relied on elements from previous naturalistic Oxlang projects. 
like Pianos Interlingua, Latino Sign Flexion, Jess Persons Novial, Von Walls Occidental, Interlingu, and the Academy's Idiom Neutral. Like Occidental, Interlingua was designed to have words recognizable at sight by those who already know a Romance language, or a language, like English, with much vocabulary borrowed from Romance languages. To attain this end the IALA accepted a degree of grammatical and orthographic complexity considerably greater than in Esperanto or Occidental, though still less than in any natural language. The theory underlying interlingua posits an international vocabulary, a large number of words and affixes, that are present in a wide range of languages. This already existing international vocabulary was shaped by social forces, science, and technology, to all corners of the world. The goal of the International Auxiliary Language Association was to accept into interlingua every widely international word, in whatever languages it occurred. They conducted studies to identify the most generally international vocabulary possible while still maintaining the unity of the language. The scientific approach of generating a language from selected source languages, called control languages, resulted in a vocabulary and grammar that we, who can call the highest common factor of each major European language. Interlingua gained a significant speaker community, perhaps roughly the same size as that of Ido considerably less than the size of Esperanto. Interlingua success can be explained by the fact that it is the most widely understood international auxiliary language by virtue of its naturalistic, as opposed to schematic, grammar and vocabulary, allowing those familiar with the Romance language and educated speakers of English to read and understand it without prior study. Interlingua has some active speakers currently on all continents, and the language is propagated by the Union Mundio Pro Interlingua, UMI, and Interlingua is presented on CDs, radio, and television. After the creation of Interlingua, there were no more successful attempts in international language engineering. That would attract a significant number of supporters, thus the enthusiasm about constructed languages gradually decreased in the years between 1960-1990. Internet Age All of the Oxlangs with a surviving speaker community seem to have benefited from the advent of the Internet, Esperanto more than most. The Kinlang mailing list was founded in 1991, in its early years discussion focused on international auxiliary languages. As people interested in artistic languages and engineered languages grew to be the majority of the list members, and flame wars between proponents of particular Oxlangs irritated these members, a separate AUXLANG mailing list was created, which has been the primary venue for a discussion of Oxlangs since then. Besides giving the existing Oxlangs with speaker communities a chance to interact rapidly online, as well as slowly through postal mail, or more rarely in personal meetings, the Internet has also made it easier to publicize new Oxlang projects. And a handful of these have gained a small speaker community, including Gotava, Lingua Frankanova, Mundlingo, and Tokipona. List of Languages 19th Century Language name ISO year of first publication creator comments Sol Ressel 1827 Francois Sudry based on pitch level sounded with their Sol fetch syllables, a musical language communicate in Sprache 1839 Joseph Schiffer based on French Universal Glit 1868 Jean Piero and early a posterior language predating even Volapuk Volapuk Vo, VOL 1879-1880 Johann Martin Schleier first, to generate international interest in IAL's Esperanto EO. EPO 1887 LL Zamenhof easily the most popular auxiliary language ever invented, including tens of thousands of speakers, and the only one to date with its own native speakers Pockel 1887, or 1898 Ulf Nicholas an a priori language, by a former Volapuk advocate Mundel and Co. 1888 J. Brackman the first Esperanto Bolak 1899 Leon Bolak prospered fairly well in its initial years, now all almost forgotten. 20th Century Language name ISO year of first publication creator comments idiom neutral 1902 Waldemar Rosenberg or a naturalistic IAL, 
by a former advocate of Vala Puclatino sign flex IO 1903 G Giuseppe Piano Latin without inflections, it replaced idiom neutral. In 1908 row 1904 Reverend Edward Powell Foster and a priori language using categories of knowledge Edo Io. Edo 1907 A group of reformist Esperanto speakers the most successful offspring of Esperanto Adjavilo 1910 Claudius Colas and Esperantidos Unbelieve was created to cause dissent among Edoas Occidental I.L.E. 1922 Edgar de Waal a sophisticated naturalistic I.A.L. Also known as Interl in UNOV LNOV 1928.O Jesperson another sophisticated naturalistic IAL, by a famous Danish linguist Basic English 1930 Charles K. Ogden a reduced and simplified form of English. Proposed as an international auxiliary language zone in 1935 Kenneth Searight best known attempt at universality of vocabulary Esperanto to 1937 René de Saussure last of linguists Saussure's many Esperantidos Mundial 1940s Dr. Helgi Heimer naturalistic European language close IGS 1943 Lancelot Ogben at al originally called interglossa, has a strong Greco-Latin vocabulary Blis symbol ZBL 1949 Charles Blis and a geographic writing system with its own grammar and syntax. Interlingua IA. Ina 1951 International Auxiliary Language Association A major effort to develop a common Romance vocabulary until 1956 Eric Wee an effort to unite the most common systems of constructed languages Linguist System Freighter 1957 Famcks want I Greco-Latin vocabulary with Southeast Asian grammar Neo 1961 Arturo Alfandari A Veritas European language Bob 1962 Riccicio Cremoto noted for using Latin letters as an abjad unilingua 1966 New Bar Agapoff and a priori language with systematic vocabulary, also known as Mirav RK Com Esperantum 1969 Manuel Halbelic, Archaic Esperanto, developed for use in Esperanto literature if Rehili AFH 1970 K A Kumi Atabri A Pan African language Kotav Ava K 1978 Staran Fetchi A Sophisticated A Priori I A L Rabi 1986 Joel Land A Spaced on the common Indo-European roots, and the common grammatical points of the IE languages Polius Po 1990s. Ntohiada Idehesti Sikwoya Esperanto Grammar, with significant Cherokee vocabulary Europanto 1996 Diego Marani A Linguistic Gest by a European Diplomat Unish 1996 Language Research Institute. Sejong University vocabulary from 15 representative languages Nizillo 1997 Mr. Centero a language trying to avoid any regional or ethnic bias lingua Franca Nova LFN 1998 C. George Bowie and others Romance vocabulary with Creole, like Grammar Slovio 1999 Mark Hugo a constructed language based on the Slavic languages and Esperanto grammar 21st century Language name ISO year of first publication creator comments Mundlingo 2002 Hiafu Simple English Romance Language from Asia Sloviansky 2006 Andrej Renik, Gabriel Svoboda, Jan van Steenbergen, Igor Polyakov A naturalistic language based on the Slavic languages GA 2006 Anonymous and Analytic A priori language designed to be easy to learn and pronounce Modern Indo-European 2006 Carlos Quiles Maria Teresa Badala based on Proto-Indo-European language Samba Simon dialect 2007 Olivier Simon mixture of simplified Proto-Indo-European and other languages Lingua de Planeta 2010 D. Ivanov, Alisenko, and others World Lang based on the most widely spoken languages of the world Angos 2011 Benjamin Wood Simplified World Lang with a strict grammar Unifianti, Internacional Lingua 2014 C. Leonard Concise and Naturalistic Language based on and influenced by common features of Romance languages especially Portuguese and Spanish, but also Italian, Catalan, French, Romanian, and English, with a few worldwide influences Asaro 2014 unknown based on the Latin, mainly, also Germanic languages and Turkic languages. Scholarly study. The section requires expansion. 
January 2015. In the early 1900s Oxlangs were already becoming a subject of academic study. Louis Couturat et al. described the controversy in the preface to their book International Language and Science. The question of a so-called world language, or better expressed, an international auxiliary language, was during the now pass Volapük period, and is still in the present Esperanto movement, so much in the hands of utopians, fanatics, and enthusiasts, that it is difficult to form an unbiased opinion concerning it, although a good idea lies at its basis. 1910, pv. For Kultura et al., both Volapukas and Esperantis confounded the linguistic aspect of the question with many side issues, and they considered this a main reason why discussion about the idea of an international auxiliary language has appeared unpractical. Leopold Fondler wrote that an IAL was needed for more effective communication among scientists. All who are occupied with the reading or writing of scientific literature have assuredly very often felt the want of a common scientific language, and regretted the great loss of time and trouble caused by the multiplicity of languages employed in scientific literature. Classification The following classification of auxiliary languages was developed by Pierre Janton, in 1993. A priori languages are characterized by largely artificial morphemes, not borrowed from natural languages, schematic derivation, simple phonology, grammar, and morphology. Some a priori languages are called philosophical languages, referring to their basis in philosophical ideas about thought and language. These include some of the earliest efforts at auxiliary language in the 17th century. Some more specific subcategories. Oligosynthetic or oligoisolating languages have no more than a few hundred morphemes. Most of their vocabulary is made of compound words or set phrases formed from these morphemes. Sona and Tokipona are well-known examples, although Tokipona's word stock is mostly based on other languages, and therefore not a priori. Taxonomic languages form their words using a taxonomic hierarchy, with each phoneme of a word helping specify its position, in a semantic hierarchy of some kind, for example, saw wrestle, andro. Pasigraphies are pure Liridan languages, without a spoken form, or with a spoken form left at the discretion of the reader. Many of the 17th-18th century philosophical languages and oxlangs were pasigraphies. The set historically tends to overlap with taxonomic languages, though there is no inherent reason a pasigraphy needs to be taxonomic. Logical languages, for example, Loglan and Lodgepon, aim to eliminate ambiguity. Both these examples, it should be noted, derive their morphemes from a broad range of natural languages using statistical methods. A posteriori languages are based on existing natural languages. Nearly all the auxiliary languages with fluent speakers are in this category. Most of the a posteriori auxiliary languages borrow their vocabulary primarily, or solely from European languages, and base their grammar more or less on European models. Sometimes these European-based languages are referred to as Euro clones, although this term has negative connotations, and is not used in the academic literature. Interlingua was drawn originally from international scientific vocabulary, in turn based primarily on Greek and Latin roots. Glosa did likewise, with a stronger dependence of Greek roots. Although a posteriori languages have been based on most of the families of European languages, the most successful of these, notably Esperanto, Edo, and Interlingua, have been based largely on Romance elements. Schematic, or mixed languages have some a priori qualities. Some have ethnic morphemes but alter them significantly to fit a simplified phonotactic pattern, e.g., Volapuk, Tokipona, or both artificial and natural morphemes, e.g., Perio. Partly schematic languages have partly schematic and partly naturalistic derivation, e.g., Esperanto and Edo. Natural morphemes of languages in this group are rarely altered greatly from their source language form, but compound and derived words are generally not recognizable at sight by people familiar with the source languages. Naturalistic languages resemble existing natural languages. 
For example, Occidental, Interlingua, and Lingua Franca Nova were developed so that not only the root words, but their compounds and derivations will often be recognizable immediately by large numbers of people. Some naturalistic languages do have a limited number of artificial morphemes or invented grammatical devices, e.g. Novial. Note that the term naturalistic as used in auxiliary language scholarship which does not mean the same thing as the homophonous term used in describing artistic languages. Better source needed. Simplified natural languages reduce the full extent of vocabulary and partially regularize the grammar of a natural language, e.g. Basic English, Special English, and Globish. Comparison of sample texts. Some examples of the best-known international auxiliary languages are shown below for comparative purposes. As a reference for comparison, you can find the English and Latin versions of the Lord's Prayer, a text which is regularly used for linguistic comparisons, here. Methods of Propagation As has been pointed out, the issue of an international language is not so much which, but how. Several approaches exist toward the eventual full expansion and consolidation of an international auxiliary language. 1. Laissez faire. This approach is taken in the belief that one language will eventually and inevitably win out as a world auxiliary language, e.g., international English, without any need for specific action. 2. Institutional sponsorship and grassroots promotion of language programs. This approach has taken various forms, depending on the language and language type, ranging from government promotion of a particular language to one-on-one -on -one encouragement to learn the language to instructional or marketing programs. 3. National Legislation This approach seeks to have individual countries, or even localities, progressively endorse a given language as an official language, or to promote the concept of international legislation. Four. International legislation. This approach involves promotion of the future holding of a binding international convention, perhaps to be under the auspices of such international organizations as the United Nations or Interparliamentary Union, to formally agree upon an official international auxiliary language which would then be taught in all schools around the world, beginning at the primary level. This approach seeks to put international opinion and law behind a language and thus to expand or consolidate it as a full official world language. This approach could either give more credibility to a natural language already serving this purpose to a certain degree, e.g., if English were chosen, or to give a greatly enhanced chance for a constructed language to take root. For constructed languages particularly, this approach has been seen by various individuals in the IAL movement as holding the most promise of ensuring that promotion of studies in the language would not be met with skepticism at its practicality by its would-be learners. Pictorial Languages There have been a number of proposals for using pictures, ideograms, diagrams, and other pictorial representations for international communications. Examples range from the original Charakte Ristica Universalis proposed by the philosopher Leibniz, to suggestions for the adoption of Chinese writing, to recent inventions such as Blissimbol. Within the scientific community, there is already considerable agreement in the form of the schematics used to represent electronic circuits, chemical symbols, mathematical symbols, and the energy systems language of systems ecology. We can also see the international efforts at regularizing symbols used to regulate traffic, to indicate resources for tourists, and in maps. Some symbols have become nearly universal through their consistent use in computers, and on the Internet. Sign Languages An international auxiliary sign language has been developed by deaf people who meet regularly at international forums such as sporting events or in political organizations. Previously referred to as guest do know, but now more commonly known simply as international sign, the language has continued to develop since the first signs were standardized in 1973, and it is now in widespread use. International sign is distinct in many ways from spoken IALs, many signs are iconic and signers tend to insert these signs into the grammar of their own sign language, with an emphasis on visually intuitive gestures and mime. 
a simple sign language called Plains Indian Sign Language was used by indigenous peoples of the Americas. Just Uno is not to be confused with the separate and unrelated sign language Sign Uno, which is essentially a signed exact Esperanto. Sin Uno is not in any significant use, and is based on the Esperanto community rather than based on the international deaf community. Criticism there has been considerable criticism of international auxiliary languages, both in terms of individual proposals, types of proposals, and in more general terms. Criticisms directed against Esperanto and other early auxlangs in the late 19th century included the idea that different races have sufficiently different speech organs, that an international language might work locally in Europe but hardly worldwide, and the prediction that if adopted, such an Oxlang would rapidly break up into local dialects. Advances in linguistics have done away with the first of these, and the limited but significant dubious discuss use of Esperanto, Edo, and Interlingua, on an international scale, without break up into unintelligible dialects, has shown that, Either a rapid breakup into dialects shall not happen too soon in the future, or that there is enough constant standardization to reduce the diversity of the language. Subsequently, much criticism has been focused either on the artificiality of these oxlangs, or on the argumentativeness of oxlang proponents and their failure to agree on one oxlang, or even on objective criteria by which to judge oxlangs. However, probably the most common criticism is that a constructed oxlang is unnecessary because natural languages such as English are already in wide use as oxlangs and work well enough for that purpose. One criticism already prevalent in the late 19th century and still sometimes heard today is that an international language might hasten the extinction of minority languages. One response has been that, even if this happens, the benefits would outweigh the costs. Another, that proponents of Oxlangs, particularly in the Esperanto movement, are generally also proponents of measures to conserve and promote minority languages, YN cultures. Although referred to as international languages, most of these languages have historically been constructed on the basis of Western European languages. In the late 19th, and early 20th centuries it was common for Volapük and Esperanto, and to some extent Edo, to be criticized for not being Western European enough. Occidental and interlingua were, among other things, responses to this kind of criticism. More recently all these major Oxlangs have been criticized for being too European, and not global enough. One response to this criticism has been that doing otherwise in no way makes the language easier for anyone, while drawing away from the sources of much international vocabulary, technical and popular. Another response, primarily from Esperanto speakers, is that the internationality of a language has more to do with the culture of its speakers than with its linguistic properties. The term Euro clone was coined to refer to these languages in contrast to world langs with global vocabulary sources. The term is sometimes applied only to self proclaimed naturalistic ox langs such as Occidental and Interlingua, sometimes to all ox langs with primarily European vocabulary sources, regardless of their grammar, including Esperanto and Lingua Franca Nova. The response to this argument was made by Alexander Goad, and reiterated by Mario Pei, a vocabulary selected from a broad variety of languages does not make the language any easier for speakers of any one language. Goad's example compares a paragraph in interlingua with a paragraph with words from Chinese, Japanese, Malay, and other non-European languages. The first is readily understood by anyone familiar with the Romance languages, and not difficult for most English speakers. Los Aldice, Iomia Pelisol. Ioes Multo Berlanti. Iomi Leva Alist, EQ Endo Iomi Leva, Ieles Di. Io Regarda Pertu Finestri Con Mi Oculo Brillanti Comolia Euro, Eiode Dice Quando Ieles Temple Rea Lever Te. E I O T E dice, pigro, levity e. I own on brillo fen q to rest to alecto a dolmer, s e d q to leg e q to t e promina. 
The second is not only difficult for Europeans, but the Malay speaker will not understand the Chinese words, the Chinese speaker will not understand the Japanese words, and the Japanese speaker will not understand the Malay words. Matahari you, Wote Nama Matahari. Wote Hen Brilanti. Wolewa Woest, Danti OK I will Wolewa Wo, Adahari. Woe am I are you for an IT finestra sama woti mata brillanti komokin, dan wo you an IT ok I ate a tempo a lever and I. Dan wo you an I, sust, leva and I. Wo non brilla sam rap and I tom arwa t ok o and m uru, s e d wo brilla sam rap and I leva and I, dan q and I s u r u cam, and I y o m u, dan and I are you ku. An a priori vocabulary such as that of Spokil or Kotava, or a vocabulary constructed mathematically, such as that of Loglin or Lodgebon, would likely be as comprehensible. Goda argues, additionally, that the Western languages are the unofficial languages of international science, medicine, and technology, and therefore an IAL based on them provides the best access to that literature. Nevertheless, it must be said. That a more neutral vocabulary, perhaps even an a priori one, would be less offensive to some non-Europeans. In the 1990s and early 2000s, many proposals for Oxlangs based on global sources of vocabulary and grammar have been made, but most, like the majority of the European-based Oxlangs of earlier decades, remain sketches too incomplete to be speakable, and of the more complete ones, few have gained any speakers. More recently there has been a trend on the AUXLANG mailing list and on the more recently founded Worldlang mailing list to greater collaboration between various proponents of the more globally based Oxlang.